Let everyone drink up their cup. Here's a health to the old apple tree. Welcome to Cider Chat. My name is Rhea Wincoller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. We are now in Season 7 of Cider Chat, and this here episode is 303. And that means that there are 302 episodes waiting for you to discover at the podcast archives at ciderchat.com. Say you have a keen interest in Michigan ciders, like a new listener to Cider Chat by the name of Kenneth. Well, for Kenneth and all the fans of Michigan, there's a whole bunch of episodes that you can find at the podcast archives. There's one with Greg Hall of Virtue Cider, Nicole and Rafe Ward of Forgotten Ciders, Dan Young of Tandem Ciders. I did a wonderful dinner with Phil of Gitchy Gumi Cider Works. We went to an Ethiopian restaurant, and I want to say, mmm, it was so good. Talk about a food pairing. Mm. We also had Paul Vanderhyde of uh, Vandermill. That's a cidery uh, just right outside of Grand Rapids. And we had Ridge Cider. And then I did a special recording titled Cider Voices from Grand Rapids. And most recently on last week's episode was Patrick McCauley of Washtenaw County. That's right around Ann Arbor, talking about all the amazing cider mills from 1841 to today. So that's just one area. I have covered the Pacific Northwest, uh, we would say Southern California, Northern California, just about every spot in the USA we've touched upon, and also parts of way outside of the USA, going into Europe and further afield from there. So there's a lot to be had. Just go to ciderchat.com forward slash podcasts and have fun. This past weekend was smack in the middle of the winter, which means it's wassail time. And I was able to get to a wassail despite the bitter, bitter cold, which was about six degrees out. Now, I just want to catch up some of you who are regular listeners. Back on the 300th episode that I released in 2021, I said that I was planning to go to the UK. Well, I didn't. No! I canceled my flight the night before I was to leave, uh, partly because there was a storm Coming, I was contacted by the airline saying that it was either going to be canceled or delayed. And that set everything off schedule because in this time of corona, that may not be the best choice. And specifically at that point in time for the UK, you were required to, upon arrival, have a PCR test. And if I missed my flight or it was delayed, that would just send everything off and I wouldn't be able to go anywhere. I'd have to quarantine until I got the test. So, (laughs) you know, sometimes you just can't keep on pushing up the hill if you have nowhere to go. And luck had it that everything worked out. I was able to kind of cancel without too much heartbreak, uh, although my heart was longing to be there and to be wassailing. But as luck has it, wassails take place all over the world these days. And on this here episode, we're going to be sharing with you on how you could do your own wassail if you've never attended one before, because it does have some tradition to it, which is really fun to integrate. And we're going to have a very special guest who is near and dear to my heart and one of the key people who has done so much programming for Cider Days over the past couple of years, specifically for the 25th annual Cider Days event that takes place in my special spot of Ciderville. So we'll be going to that a little bit later on in this episode after we talk about some of our sponsors. Walk into the orchards. Cider Chat is listener supported and there's two ways to help. Well, there's many ways to do it, but two ways that it really needs your monetary support. One is to hit the donate button at ciderchat.com. And the second way is to become a Cider Chat patron via the Patreon page for Cider Chat. So that's a website for content, 
creators like myself to get support from listeners so I can continue to keep on producing these episodes. And you can sign up just like Ginger and Scott did. They are starting a new cidery called Olympic Bluff Cidery. And they signed up and just became heavy hitters for Cider Chat via their monthly donation. I am so grateful and so thankful. You know, I've been corresponding with Ginger for a while. She's been interested on going on one of my Totally Cider tours and certainly the one that I'm going to have for Normandy coming up in fall of 2022. And out of the blue, she became a patron. I was just so stoked to see that and so ever grateful because I want to be able to keep on producing hour-long segments of the show because there's a lot of good cider news to share with you. And it'd be a damn shame if I couldn't do that because basically I couldn't afford the bill to upload that much data on my server, which is what it's coming down to. So do become a patron today. And thank you to all the fine patrons there at Cider Chat and also the commercial makers who are supporting this podcast via the Cider Chat Patreon page and the donate button. The American Cider Association invites you to their 12th annual CiderCon, a global cider conference for cider professionals. CiderCon is taking place February 1st through the 4th, 2022, in beautiful Richmond, Virginia, at the heart of a celebrated cider region. With tours, tastings, educational workshops, demos, and more, CiderCon's return to an in-person event is bound to be one of the most energetic CiderCons to date. There's loads of awesome cider making sessions that will be offered. Whether you're just getting started or an expert cider maker, there's something in these sessions for everyone. Learn to problem solve in the cidery with sessions like A Cider Among the Faults or Hunting for Spoilage Microbes. Learn from other cider industries in sessions like Barrel Programs, A Wine Perspective for Cider or Towards Sustainable Cider, Lessons from the Craft Beverage Industry. Take a deep dive into production by attending a session like How Chemistry Parameters Lead to Style Outcomes or Cider Packaging and the Product Decisions that Get You There. Not to mention there's a myriad of tasting sessions like Fruited Ciders, Beyond the Apple, Best Practices for Producing Cider with Residual Sugars, Survey of Yeast-Derived Characteristics, and Hands-On Blending and Wild, Clean, and Free. Harnessing the beauty of wild fermenting without the flaws. Register soon because these tasting sessions are filling up fast. Tickets to CiderCon are just 435 bucks if you book by January 20th. And this episode is going out on the 19th. So if you download CiderChat really early on, you still have time to get into that early booking by January 20th. So do it. Do it today. To learn more about the wide array of events and educational sessions being offered and to register for CiderCon, head to the American Cider Association website today. CiderCon is an ACA member event produced with the generous support of members and sponsors. Learn how to become an ACA member or sponsor today by going to ciderassociation.org. Is the van ready? Mr. Quince, I've been working on it a bit. What about the front door, Rhea? Well, it's not fully closing right now, but, you know, if I pull out the little screwdriver and I put in, I don't know, some like WD, I think it'll get working. We'll be able to close it. I'm scared. No, 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 no. Wait, mate, talking palms. We're going to be okay. Look, we took the Plymouth Voyager on the Ciderfield road trip this past summer And it worked fine, you know? We got home safe and sound, no problem. Indeed. But this is the middle of the winter, Rhea. Look, Perry Pear, we're going to be okay. I'm going to make sure that the oil level's good, the transmission's good, the tires are, are pretty much brand new tires. And we'll have plenty of room to bring all our cider. We're bringing stuff down to share with patrons of Cider Chat. So we want to make sure, you know... They're going to be there at CiderCon to definitely let us know so we could raise a glass because I always bring something special along to share with patrons. And we're leaving a little bit early, you know, so we can make sure we get to Richmond in time for the tour on Tuesday. I'm going to go check the van now. Me too. Okay, Poms, go ahead, check it, make sure it's okay. Mr. Quince, shall we put in some extra blankets, flares, and flashlights? Roger that, Perry. 
What would I do without you? If you're a commercial producer of cider, knowing what to sell your cider at is absolutely critical. And it's really the way of a business, isn't it? You produce a product, you sell a product, and then you clear out your warehouse, or in this case, a cidery, you empty the vats so that you'll have enough room to bring in the new crop of apples and the juice that's being produced there to make cider. That is a win-win combination. But how do you get that price point? I mean, you don't put a whole bunch of numbers in a hat and pull one out and say, aha, for this bottle, say, we're going to put this at a price point of, I don't know, what do you say, Joe? We put it at six bucks. No, let's make it 10. (laughs) You don't want to be doing that because what you might think is a $10 bottle of cider, somebody else might think it's a $16 bottle and it's worth every penny. Or conversely, maybe it is worth six bucks. And the only way you're going to find out about that is by getting feedback. And one of the clear-cut ways you could do that is by entering your cider today into the New York International Cider Competition. It's taking place on February 22nd in New York City, and it is designed specifically for commercial makers. And the judges are the buyers and sellers of product who will give you straight-up feedback whether or not your cider is going to sell, and whether or not stylistically it is meeting the market, which I would assume is worth every single penny that you would put into that judging pool to get that kind of feedback. So don't delay because February 22nd is coming up. And all you need to do is go to nyiciderCompetition.com and scroll down to find how you could register your cider today. Once again, go to nyiciderCompetition.com. Smelling all the blossoms. Ria? Yes, Medlars? The doors are frozen shut. Oh, on the van? Well, you know, that happens up here in New England. It was just only like raining and snowing yesterday. They'll thaw out. Maybe yes, maybe no. Ye of little faith here. Come on, Medlars. We speak. The truth. I know you do. Anyways, what would you find out, Mr. Quince? Perhaps we should rent a van. Oh, come on. Palms. Uh, It's just a 1997 Plymouth Voyager. I know it's going to make it down to Virginia. We'll take our time, as we always do. We're going to go along the way. I was thinking about, you know, maybe pairing some cider and food with some different spots that we've been looking at on our map. I'm going to create a list of rental cars. Let's do it. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, we only have so much in our budget, and, you know, we're not millionaires here doing podcasting. You know, it's kind of out of the pocket. So let's, we'll just take our time and go along. I'll bring my triple A card. I have a card too, Perry Pear. I'll remember to bring it. Right. Like you signed up for the Steve Martin masterclass in comedy. I said I would look at that class, Perry Pear. I didn't say that I would totally sign up. Yes, you did. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting a sense that palms rule the world. Bingo! Oh, my goodness. I can't even. (coughs) Shall we move on to the wassail? Yes, Mr. Quince. That would be awesome. Let's do that. Al Sachs was last on Cider Chat in episode 72 titled Lost Apples of the Quabbin. He did a presentation with Matt Kaminsky, who is also known as Gnarly Pippins on Instagram. And the two of them were charting different apples in an area known as the Quabbin Reservoir, which was taken over many years ago to build a giant reservoir that feeds the city of Boston. And as such, about, well, not about, but five towns were basically torn down and moved out of there. Everything, the the landscape was totally clear, yet the apples, some of them remain. So that is a pretty cool episode, and I'll put a link in the show notes to hear the lost apples of the Quabbin. But on this here episode, he's going to be telling us about how you can do your own wassail, because he has been leading 
Wasils for a number of years. He is what is known as the butler or the master of ceremony. So get your cup ready and join this chat with Al Sachs of Amherst, Massachusetts. Wasils have a long history that go back into medieval and maybe even before medieval times where in the middle of winter, people wanted to go out and make sure that they celebrated their orchards and wish them well so that they could be fruitful into the next year. Orchards were an important part of the rural economy. If you think about the old ways of orcharding, you would have uh, animals like cattle or sheep underneath the, the trees and above the trees would bring apples and uh, it provided you know, fruit and drink and dried apples. And it was a really important part of a, of a local economy. So wassail, if you go back to the original meaning, comes from the, 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 the Anglo-Saxon or the Norse, meaning to your health. And in the old days, people would say wassail, meaning I wish you health. And the response would be drink hail. And you would drink a toast to the the person who offered the the wassail toast to you. I like wassails because they bring people out to the orchard in the winter. We've often been cooped up for a while and uh, it gets us outside. We remember that there is a whole natural world out there. We're not just staring at four walls. We understand that there's, you know, a real beautiful world at night, too. It's not generally held during the daytime, but, of course, it can be. And um, it's a way to also celebrate the people who grow apples and and, uh, maintain the orchards. So I'd love to talk to you a little bit today about what I do to put one together. Cool. So when you say wassail, it also could be, um, if I was doing it in the Norse way, it would be veshail? You know, you're better at the Nordic languages <laughs> than I am. Oh, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I know the songs, but I don't know all of the, uh, all the pronunciation from, uh, from uh, various countries. Well, it's all about the song. So when does it take place? Generally, it's thought about as happening on Twelfth Night. And Twelfth Night, of course, changed over time because there was a change uh, from the Julian calendar to the calendar we currently use. But basically, it's sometime like 12 days after Christmas or sometime in, in January. But you know, I think that people need to think about this as to when's a, when's a nice time to do it in January or early February. It really doesn't need to have a specific date. It needs to be when you can gather people together and uh, kind of uh, welcome in the new year and, you know, and make sure you're, you're giving your orchard a good uh, kick off to the to the uh, to the next season. It's kind of the beginning of the whole apple season. Mm-hmm. And just to give a nod to our friends down in the southern hemisphere, their midwinter time would be in July. And I know that there is a cidery in Tasmania, which is the island off of Australia, uh, known as Apple Isle. And at Willie Smith's, they have their annual midwinter festival in July. I think it's normally around July fifteenth. And it's kind of hard for us to be thinking about that, but there's a whole other world down in the Southern Hemisphere <laughs> that is right. able to, you know, bring in this tradition. So, um, yeah, they, they do it backwards down there, and that, and that's a good thing too. <laughs> or we do it backwards up here, you know? Exactly. Who knows which? <laughs> Who knows which switch? It's a round globe. So, yeah, um, it it takes so, place. There, there's two things, like the twelfth night. You know, like the traditionalists will be like the the fifth or the sixth of January, right? And then a lot of folks really kind of focusing in around the 16th or the 15th, 16th or 17th. However, it falls. It's always like on a, a weekend uh, these days. I don't know if they did it sure. on a weekend in the, the old days. It was when it happened was on the 12th night to be exact. And I love your point that it could be any time of the year that kind of makes it doable. 
Absolutely. And people do this uh, as, you know, they'll, they'll do some that are very simple. They can do them inside. They can bring a, a little uh, potted apple tree into a, to like a daycare and, 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 uh, and celebrate the apples and the trees there. They could do this in, out during the day in your backyard. Even if your orchard is just one tree, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you don't need to have a massive uh, uh, field of, uh, of trees to, to do this. But typically, um, when I try to set these up, I try to find uh, an orchard or or a group of friends who want to do this. We will find an orchard and we will plan it for a night that people can come. So you you think about all those things you like you do with any party. Like, okay, where are we going to park the cars? That type of thing. Mm-hmm. And so here's the typical uh, arrangement that that I would think about. You have a place to gather near the orchard. If it's at nighttime, you're going to need lights. Um, and in some traditions, uh, there are um, torches that are brought to to the procession. The first one that a wassail I went to was in England at a commercial orchard, and there were a lot of torches. And it was pretty exciting and probably a little freaky for me because coming from the United States, Torchlight's possessions at night were generally things that seemed to be uh, associated with uh, terrible things happening to people and kind of scary. But it was kind of neat to see it in a celebratory way, mm-hmm. too. So these days, I've used both live torches and um, basically flashlights. Um, and the live torches or candles are very fun. You have to be careful because you don't want to burn yourself. And uh, it's always good to have a backup flashlight because unless you're skilled at making torches, they go out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, I I always enjoy going to the wassail that you've done at the Carr Cider House, which is a local cidery in our area here in western Massachusetts. And I know that Matt Kaminsky, known as Gnarly Gnarly Pippin, Pippin, thank you, um, is often making the torches and handing them out. And what yes. I do know about torch making is going out and getting a good stick, uh, having some wire, and using natural fibers like cotton. You don't want to use anything like a uh, nylon, which could melt. No, no polys. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, you wrap that up at the top of the torch, have maybe a pointy end on the bottom, or have a designated spot once you get to the location to put your torches into the ground. <clears throat> and they will burn for a long time. And because you're using uh, maybe paraffin or other different substances on the material itself, they could be hard to put out. So, yes, play safe. <laughs> yeah, be safe. Usually there's snow around in, in our area, so it's not too much of a problem. So, so the procession, you want to gather everybody together because you want to process. You want to make a procession up to your, your wassail site. And, you know, it may be... 20 feet, or it may be longer than that. You may want to go. I've gone, you know, for like a half a mile to the site, and that's been a lot of fun. Generally, what you will want to have is a site that's prepared near a large apple tree, which is what you will use as the centerpiece of your wassail. And um, since it's cold uh, and traditionally, there is a fire. Now, I've been to wassails where they've had 12 fires ringing a tree, which stand for the 12 apostles. And um, that's a pretty impressive uh, situation when you can see that. But um, in most of the little wassails I've been involved with in in the United States, um, there's only been one fire. And of course, it's it's quite welcome at that time of year. Um, People will or people should bring some cider with them, whether it's sweet or made made in their own basements or or gotten at the at the your local cidery. We process generally to a site. Um, there would be a uh, hopefully a fire already going so that people can gather around that and we wait for everybody to gather and then um, proceed with a a short ceremony after which uh, we potluck and have a bunch of food. <laughs> and so that's it uh, in a in a in a nutshell. The procession is an important part of it. Traditionally, there is two pe- people who will play the role of a king or queen. Now that's 
you know, anybody can be the king or the queen. Typically, it's young people who've been picked to do this. One thing that I found is that it's great to have uh, anybody do this, but whoever you pick should feel you, you need to have people who aren't shy because they will have a role uh, in the in the in the ceremony. And so, you know, people can get dressed up in all sorts of, of funny clothes. And um, if I am leading the ceremony, uh, which I I do in a, in a number I've done in a number of occasions, um, I would be referred to in England as the butler who is the MC, we would say in, in this country, but the butler leads the uh, kind of leads the show and kind of uh, helps people follow along with what's happening. And, um, and I like to dress up as a, a very traditional Celtic character called the green man. And you'll see those faces of the green man on old uh, churches in England and the people who have like faces that look like they're made out of oak leaves or whatever. And they're, they're a, um, kind of a half man, half nature, uh, you know, kind of fairy or God. And, you know, this is all about having fun and, and, and playing, but also respecting the role that we have interacting with nature and um, being uh, in, in concert with nature. And uh, tr- because we are trying to encourage the trees to, to give us great apples. Mm-hmm. And so we can have more apple cider the next year. If you're planning a, a wassail, if it's at your own orchard or you're doing it, as you said, at a daycare center or maybe even at an elder center, uh, right. you know, indoors, you might want to have a, a little mind's eye on who's going to be the king or queen. Uh, but there's other ways to get the king and queen, too. You could pick them ahead of time, but there's also something where you could eat a uh, cake. And in that slice of cake, I believe there's like... It's kind of like what they do in Louisiana to like who's going to host a party that year. They have the little gold baby. Cake, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, they, they, that's also a very a tradition in Wales, too. There's, uh, you know, sometimes they put a coin in in a, in a cake and people could eat the cake. And whoever's got that, oh, I've got the coin. You know, mm-hmm. they could be the one who's who's yeah. who's leading it. Or there could be a there could be a, 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 you know, like you could do one potato, two potato. There's any number <laughs> of ways that you could pick who, who wants to uh, who wants to lead that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they need to, you know, and they can be celebrated in very sort of gentle ways of like, oh, so, you know, uh, of course, in the old days, you might if if it was a, a Yuletide celebration, you might be considered the king or queen of misrule and have a lot of mischief up your sleeve and uh, be able to be a little more of a prankster. But it really depends on how you want to see this thing um, roll out. Do they lead the procession or is it? I like them to, I like them to lead the procession. Okay. And if you're lucky enough to have people who are musical or even partly musical, if they can bring a drum or, you know, um, a, 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 a a uh, accordion or something of that sort or, or any uh, whistle or something, just have some kind of a music so people can, you know, kind of march along up to the, uh, to the wassail site. And then that's where you sort of start your, you start your, your ceremony around the fire. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in 2022 now. So just for folks listening out in Sardeville, you know, the King and Queen can be anyone. Um, Absolutely. It could be, you know, non-binary, the whole, Landscape is at your feet to create whatever wassail you want, but just kind of knowing the traditions here. And Al, I think that at one time, you know, it it had to be young people and maybe a virgin. Is that true? That's what the that's what the rules were in the past. That's what I've read is that uh, you know they they wanted this this to be as pure a person as possible in mm-hmm. the as they thought about in the old days. Right, just shows you how traditions kind of change to make it for modern times. So folks proceed up. They're carrying torches, and it's this where they'd also be banging the pots and the pans. Uh, they'd be making some noise, but it's not quite. Not quite yet, but okay. people do need to do need to think about noisemakers at some point. Mm. You know, uh, there's uh, we'll, we'll get to that in in, in a minute. I have to say, so, ha- having attended wassails, I know that there's like a certain excitement when everybody gathers, and then all of a sudden you see someone like Al Sack show up with his green paint on and his <laughs> celebratory hat. It just gets everybody in this like buzz. It's like so exciting. And then the torches get lit, and you start proceeding up. It is quite a spectacle to see. 
It's it's a lot of fun. You know, the, the other things that we've done to help people is sometimes we've been doing this in very snowy nights. And and uh, so sometimes we'll have somebody with a pickup truck who can help people who have a hard time walking uh, get up to the, the site. Um, but you, you can figure those all those things out depending on your locality. And, you know, getting access to the site is is uh, mm-hmm. is the thing that you need to, to be thinking about. Mm-hmm. OK, so we head up to the site. And then what? There's a there's a fire lit. Gather people together. You explain a little bit about what a wassail is, namely that it's a way to bless the orchard and support its defenders. That you want to basically wish the trees and the orchard well, so they will provide fruit for the next year. So what I've done, and it again, this varies from tradition to tradition and place to place, and this is a living tradition, so we keep making it up as we go along, but I like to go around the tree three times, and uh, that's you know representing the changing of the seasons, the changing of the year, the changing of the moon, but I like to go around three times with the king and the queen leading us. I like to pour a little cider on the roots of the tree to give it strength into the into the next year. And another interesting thing is that we like to hang toast up in the trees. And the toast in the trees is to support the tom twits or the little birds or the robins or the wrens who are considered to be the defenders of the orchard. And so we want to give them a little piece of toast soaked lightly in cider and we hang them up into the trees to thank our defenders of the of the orchard and i generally make a joke about it being part of my integrated pest management system <laughs> but <laughs> hey that's so true because think about it uh one one living apple tree can have like a thousand different species i understand of insects on one single tree so that it's Absolutely. not just for the mice and stuff it's for everything Perfect. No, birds, deer, uh, all sorts of uh, little critters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. our and our and of course our friend the fungus. <laughs> uh, yeah, right, right. Yeah. That's a little bit changed from like the tradition because wasn't it Tom Tit? Like it would be a young boy, and they'd call that young boy Tom Tit, um, or the queen would be lifted up into the apple tree, and that. There- the queen or Tom Tit would place the, the the cider soaked toast on it. Yes, and that's that's all. I mean, it depends on which area you've collected this information from as to what the tradition is. So there's been uh, young lads that have been put up in a tree to to act as Tom Tit. Um, there have been uh, uh, you know young girls have been lifted up uh, to be to be putting the toast in the trees. And I generally just like to have anybody who wants to hang toast in a tree, hang toast in a tree. Mm-hmm. Bring some toast. <laughs> right, right. It's a symbolic. Symbolic, it's a symbolic yeah, term. no doubt. Right. And, and the, the toast itself, um, when we say toast, we actually, people prearrange and have toasted bread. What do you That's recommend correct. there? Is that, is that like what you pretty much have seen predominantly or when you're over in yeah. the UK? Yeah. Yes, it's it's it's. Some people get will have a piece of toast with a hole in it and a ribbon stuck through it, so you can hang it easily. Mm-hmm. Other people just take a piece of bread and stick it in the branches, mm-hmm. you know, or, or just poke a hole in the bread and stick it over a twig, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, or stick it in a Y. You know, I mean, it's really, it's again symbolic. It's not. Mm-hmm. Not really a bird feeding station. Right. right. <laughs> so folks walk around the, you have folks walk around the so apple tree. There are a number of different sort of traditional um, traditional chants that people would be saying. Um, there's songs and chants. People will sing this song. Oh, apple tree, we wassail thee and hope that thou dost bear. For lo, the Lord doth know where we shall be when apples come another year. So bear well to fruit well, so merry let us be. Let everyone drink up his cup. Cry health to the old apple tree. And then we say hats full, capfuls, barrelfuls, three bushel bags full barn floors full and even a little heap under the stairs and if you it's kind of fun to get everybody to act out each one of those different things hat fulls you kind of hold out a little hat 
cat fools again, you maybe hold out a bigger hat, barrels full, you put your arms wide like it's a barrel, three bushel bags full, you act like you're burdened down, barns full, you just you know, kind of demonstrate how big a barn would look. And then the little heap under the store the floors is the last part. And so you can get the, you know, any way you can get the crowd involved, you know, if you give them little parts to do, it's, it's adds to the fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then people would, would shout, watch sale. At this point, start trying to make a lot of loud noise to drive the bad spirits away from the orchards, anything that would pro- provide any kind of uh, damage or injury to the apple trees. Mm-hmm. Like porcupines in our area. Yeah. Any, or bears, yeah, uh, really bears are probably. Bears do some big damage. And so do, like, if you have a young orchard, you have your mice and voles and rabbits that might eat the the the, the, the bark. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that's been nice is that I've seen people add all sorts of different parts to um, the wassail, including the reading of poems. And there's a couple... Uh, Robert Frost poems that are very nice. Um, In a glass of cider is one that 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 I like, and I think that's that's always fun to add into the ceremony. But these are things you can add in while people are standing around the fire when singing songs, because there's there's a number of different songs that are um, often can be built into this um, into this this ceremony fun time that we're having here. And what a great thing to do right now during this worldwide pandemic to be able to meet people outside and to celebrate and to ward off our own demons <laughs> that are surrounding us during COVID. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's one of those things that here you have something that can be done outside. Um, it gets us out into the fresh air. And, you know, people will... Um, you know, we, we, of course, want to make sure everybody is safe. So, um, you know, people need to do their distancing and other safety precautions. Mm-hmm, for sure. Now, Morris dancers are a big part of this at, at some sites. Um, That's right. And do you have anything to say about that, Al? Or? Yeah, you need to, you need to, you need to get to be friends with your local Morris group <laughs> and see if they want to see if they want to participate. Um mm-hmm. You know, sometimes they uh, the the one of the uh, the the wassail I went to in in uh, in Hereford, England, was led by a, a Morris troop, and um, they were um, quite funny and quite rival. Um, they're they 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 had very politically incorrect humor, um, and uh, and uh, uh, but it was uh, it was very fun uh, evening. People were. You know, they tried to keep it um, keep it clean for the family part of the mm-hmm. ceremony, and they later departed to uh, drink more cider off site somewhere and sing um, dirty songs. Oh my goodness! So there's always <laughs> troublemakers. That's what yeah. keeps our world so entertaining. So the the procession. You do the blessing on the apple tree. You you pick an apple tree that you know you think is a is an one that people can gather around in a good old. Generally, the some people say the oldest apple tree, but it it doesn't matter. I've we've done wash sales where it's been a apple tree that's like three years old, so it doesn't really, you know, mm-hmm. um, it it just you know it's a and in fact. Um, some of the older poems that you read about wassailing, um, they wassail plums and other fruits as well as apples. Traditionally, we think of it as an apple standard ceremony, but it's um, it's more of an, in some ways, it's it comes out of an orcharding tradition. Mm-hmm. And wassailing uh, is something that was done and then kind of transformed into caroling, where people would go around and it was a way not to beg for food or anything. We'd go up to the door and you would wassail and people would be able to bestow you with cider and food. Well, if you if you go back to its um, English roots, you, you can see that there's sort of two strains of wassailing. One is the one that's sort of centered on the orchard. Um, and, uh, you know, and then the other one is centered on the uh, on, on the hall and uh, the or the or the um, the main house and people coming around to wassail at the house. Um, and um, so it was essentially a like many English Yuletide songs you hear about people coming door to door and asking for, you know, uh, a bit of, you know, pudding or a drink or something of that sort. In wassailing, they were drinking out of wassail cups, which were very traditionally wooden two handled cups. 
um, that had a whole ceremony built into them. And I've actually not been that involved in any kind of door to door while sailing. Um, but if you think about it, you know, around Christmas time, you know, there are, um, and, and, you know, in, in the Christian community, there's a lot of different kinds of door to door singing that goes on, caroling, uh, paranda down in Puerto Rico. Um, where, you know, people will come and eat and drink together and sing songs. Um, so, you know, this is, this is part of a, um, you know, um, both a, a, a really old school thing as well as, a, uh, as well as part of Christian culture, too. Mm-hmm. I kind of like how they do it down in Puerto Rico, where they'll then grab all the people from that house and then go to the next house, and then grab all the people <laughs> from that house and go to the next house. And, and it just becomes like this massive, like, you know, party moving from, you know, space to space. I think they really have it going on there. Yeah, um, and, the, and the, there's a similar, there's a, there's a similar um, up in, um, in uh, Nova Scotia, in the uh, French-speaking communities, these are more of uh, pre-Lent uh, celebrations, but they have, mm-hmm. uh, again, mid-winter festivals where people are mm-hmm. are celebrating before they go into into their Lent uh, with masks and you know uh, people not knowing who's who's there and mm-hmm. it's 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 going door to door and having fun with folks. Mm-hmm. Yes, so I guess it's always nice to tip our our cup to our neighbors in the UK for really creating this tradition as they had it and how it spread out. But really, it's kind of coming down to all of us to create our own traditions around wassail and with the main point of getting out to celebrate. And if it surrounds cider and apple trees, all the better. For me, it's also about connecting back with the natural world Mm. and realizing, you know, our our sustenance does come from the earth. And uh, the earth is... Uh, out there doing his thing 24 seven all year long, <laughs> whether we're outside and enjoying it or not. And it's, it's good to get back in touch with. I think it's, I think it's, um, it's a great community celebration. I think it's a great way to promote an orchard. If you're an orchard, uh, you know, if you're running an orchard, I think it's a way to bring people together and, um, and, and have some fun and some common ground. Right on. Well, I'd like to say to you, Al, wassail. Drink hell. In the show notes for this year, episode 303, you'll be able to find a list of things to do to prepare to hold a wassail. And you'll also find the words to Robert Frost's poem, In a Glass of Cider. At the very tail end of this episode, you'll hear Al Sachs, our featured guest, reciting the poem. And with that, I leave you here. This is Rhea Windcaller signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. In a Glass of Cider by Robert Frost. It seemed I was a mite of sediment that waited for the bottom of ferment. And so I could catch a bubble in ascent. I rode up on one till the bubble burst. And when that left me to sink back reverse, I was no worse off than I was at first. I'd catch another bubble if I waited. And the thing was to get now and then elated. So he's he's just talking about the bubble going up and and he's talking about being a piece of a piece of sediment at the bottom and and jumping on a bubble. And rising up in the barrel. How trippy, Robert Frost. I mean, he must have been so much fun to hang out with, you know? I know. Yeehaw!